public defenders, the only people who appear in court more frequently than former child stars. Even if you have never come into contact with a public defender, you will know them from their important cameo in the Miranda warning speech. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. 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 What is this shit? You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, oh. we will provide you with the dumbest fucking lawyer on earth. I have the right to an attorney too, pal. And if I can't afford one, what must be provided for me by the court? Yes, apparently even Garfield knows he has the right to a public defender. And he's going to need one, too, because he just murdered a lasagna. <laughs> and a person. The, the right to a lawyer is a pillar of American jurisprudence, but it's a right that we've only had since 1963, when the Supreme Court unanimously ruled that any person who is too poor to hire a lawyer cannot be assured a fair trial unless a lawyer is provided for him. It's an idea so obvious you can't believe there was ever a time that we didn't have it. Like corn on the cob holders that are shaped like corn on the cobs. <laughs> no one should ever have had to come up with those. They're essential to the fabric of American life. <laughs> the problem is, our public defender system is currently massively overburdened. Depending on the jurisdiction, anywhere from 60 to 90% of criminal defendants need a publicly funded attorney. And the system is creaking under that weight. Right now, there are about 20 public defenders handling up to 250 cases. In New Orleans, for example, each public defender handles roughly 350 cases a year. Public defenders in Fresno County often work on a thousand cases a year when state guidelines say they shouldn't be doing more than 150. A thousand cases in a year. That's nearly three cases per day. Those are Gerard Depardieu wine consumption numbers <laughs> at breakfast. And, and, and with caseloads that heavy, public defenders cannot possibly prepare an effective defence. A study in New Orleans a few years back found that the city had some part-time defenders who could only spend an average of seven minutes per case. And that is not long enough to prepare anything. If I only had seven minutes to prepare this show, I definitely would not be talking about public defenders right now. <laughs> I'd be desperately trying to fill time by listing the Muppets in order of ability. <laughs> I'll do it now. Fozzie first, obviously. <laughs> obviously, you go Fozzie first. Most attractive thing is a sense of humour. Then you've got to go Rolf. You've, you've got to go Rolf. Then you know what? I'm going Swedish chef. <laughs> and I'm finishing up with Sam the Eagle, cos you know he's into some freaky business. <laughs> freaky. And look, this is just the beginning of the problem. Some places don't even have a public defender's office. And, and some counties just contract cases out in bulk to the lowest bidder. And at its worst, this can result in a system known as meetum and pleadum, where the vast majority of defendants plead out and never even go to trial. 90 to 95 percent of all criminal cases, state and federal, are resolved by plea bargaining. Now, just think about that. About 95 percent of criminal cases never make it to trial. If law and order reflected reality, their episodes would be pretty short. It'd basically just be, uh, how does your client plead? Guilty, Your Honour. And then this. <laughs> and as a viewer, you would justifiably feel cheated by that. <laughs> and look, it is easy not to care about this. It's easy to assume that if someone is being represented by a public defender, they're probably guilty. But many are not, and some only plead because they feel they have no alternative. Look at Irma Faye Stewart. She was arrested in a drug sweep, but claimed she was innocent. She faced a 10-year sentence and was stuck in jail because she couldn't afford bail. She said her court-appointed lawyer urged her to take a plea deal, and she reluctantly agreed. I asked him, what's his name, you know... You know, I can plead for a um, five-year probation, you know, just, just let me go home to my kids. She admitted to a crime she denies committing, just to spend time with her children. That is horrifying. Especially because I would be willing to commit a crime just to not have to spend time with any children. <laughs> they are loud cesspools of bacteria with nothing interesting to say. <laughs> oh, oh, you want to grow up and be a princess? I'll tell you what happens to princesses, Ashley. Google Diana plus truth. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Google it. Google it. Google it, Ashley. <laughs> Open your eyes. Being a princess ain't fun, Ashley. Now, 
After Irma pled guilty, the prosecution's case collapsed and the other defendants who didn't take a plea deal had their charges dropped. But Irma could not take her plea back. So she had to spend five years on probation, during which she was ineligible for some form of public assistance and wound up homeless. And that is the problem with a system that can allot as little as seven minutes to helping people make decisions that can affect you for the rest of your life. Our public defender system is dangerously under-resourced. One report found out that 40% of all county-based public defenders have no investigators on staff. That's 40% of lawyers forced to sit at their desks Googling where to get exonerating evidence and hitting I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> And the offices those desks are in could potentially lack basic standards of workplace health and safety. Tough to do your job when you're competing with countless roaches crawling around your office, but that is the work environment endured by employees at Augusta's Public Defender's Office. And it's so bad that the office had to close early today. And this infestation is nothing new. Oh, it's been going on for four years. That office is getting to a point where roaches are outnumbering the lawyers. And unless one of those roaches happens to have a law degree from the University of Rochester and can <laughs> help take on some clients, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> As for New Orleans, their public defender's office has actually put up a crowdfunding page to help make up their budget shortfall. And it's currently only raised 19% of its goal. And look, nobody should be in jail because a Kickstarter didn't meet its goal. If anything, some people should be in jail because a Kickstarter did meet its goal, <laughs> like this one for an actual giant inflatable Lionel Richie head. <laughs> you two gentlemen should be locked up all night long. All night, all night, all night long. All night, all night. Hey, Jumba Jumba. Hey, Jumba Jumba. But despite all these enormous challenges, there are still some amazing lawyers, like Travis Williams. He frames every acquittal and puts it on his wall. But guess where he puts his losses? I'm gonna get the last name of every case I've lost tattooed on my back. Right now it's only five and hopefully it won't get, hopefully I won't fill my back up. That's the goal. But since the, since the wins go on the wall, I decided the losses have to go somewhere and they'll go on my back because they're gonna be with me forever. He tattoos the names of the cases he's lost on his back. That is a truly heroic lawyer. He's like Atticus Finch, only real and not, as it turns out, a horrible racist. <laughs> Screw you, Finchy, go f a mockingbird. <laughs> the point is, many public defenders do heroic work despite facing overwhelming institutional obstacles, including this incredible incident involving a Florida judge. Stop pissing me off. Just sit down. I'll take care of it. I don't need your help. No, you know what? I'm the public defender. I have a right to be here and I have a right to stand I said, and represent sit down. my clients. If you want to fight, let's go out back and I'll just beat let's your go ass. Out. <laughs> now, that is clearly a disgrace, although I will say, Fights like that would make jury duty a lot more interesting. <laughs> Your Honour, we have reached a verdict. We find the proceedings to be f***ing awesome! <laughs> Incidentally, that judge returned to the courtroom and called seven cases without the public defender being present, and he's still on the bench. And look, a bad judge can come and go, as the head of programming at NBC will tell you. <laughs> but access to a lawyer is supposed to be a constitutional right, and it is increasingly under threat. For instance, in four states, you can make so little that you qualify for food stamps, but still not be poor enough to get state-funded representation. And in at least 43 states, you can be billed for a public defender. Meaning, in these states, we have a system where, conceivably, you, if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you, provided that you pay that attorney. Which is absurd. You can't tell people something's free and then charge them for it. This is the American judicial system, not Candy Crush. <laughs> and, <laughs> and for what this can look like on a human level, meet Larry Thompson. In 2010, he was arrested in Florida for driving with a revoked license, which was a felony charge because he'd had multiple driving violations before. Larry was sent to jail, where he applied for a public defender, which in Florida, incredibly, requires a $50 application fee. 
He couldn't afford to pay that or his bail, so he was stuck in jail for 59 days, at which point he gave up and pled no contest to get out and was released on time served. But in Florida, if you use a public defender and are found guilty, even by plea, you then owe attorney's fees and costs regardless of your ability to pay. So Larry now owes not just the $50 public defender application fee, but also an extra $100 fee for having used the public defender and even another fee of $100 to pay the prosecution's costs, which is like, take, like a bully taking your lunch money and then charging you an additional lunch money reallocation fee. <laughs> But they still weren't done. On top of those and other fees for the crime he pled no contest to, the court then added partial payment fees each month for the next several months, bringing Larry's tab to $675. And that all brings us to about a month ago, when Larry was actually arrested for contempt of court as a result of not paying those fees. An arrest, incidentally, for which they charged him a $210 administrative fee. At this point, they, may, they may, may as well have just slapped on an irony fee for good measure, cos it turns out having no money in Florida can be really f***ing expensive. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. When they arrested Larry, he was receiving hospice care for a terminal pulmonary condition and was so ill, the jail was forced to send him to the hospital where he was watched by two guards and chained by his ankles to his hospital bed. Luckily, he was eventually released and his debt was paid by donors who'd heard his story. But he still, understandably, could not quite believe what had just happened to him. I never knew they, they, they would actually arrest a person in my condition for not being able to pay money because I have to pay rent. So I can't see them keep arresting me over and over to take me back to jail to charge me $250 more that I have to agree to or else I'm sitting in jail when I can't get oxygen in jail like I need it. So they, they actually they are issuing me a death sentence. None of this makes any sense. It doesn't even make fiscal sense because the state of Florida did collect the $885 in fines that Larry owed them. But in doing that, they spent thousands of dollars needlessly imprisoning him. And surely Florida could have used that money for something they badly need, like, I don't know, rehab programs for meth-addicted swamp raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming accurately. But... <laughs> but the point is, 50 years after the Supreme Court gave everyone the fundamental right to an attorney, even if you can't afford one, we now have a system where the most vulnerable people are potentially being charged for access to a hideously broken system. And we either need to fix that or, at the very least, update the Miranda warning in our cop shows to reflect reality. Hey, freeze! You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say, can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. I get it. Hey! We're not done. I'm not done. I'm not finished. That attorney may have 300 other cases that he or she is working on. That's not a joke. Literally 300 other cases. We could potentially have a total of seven minutes to prepare your defense. Do you know how short seven minutes is? You know how short seven minutes is? Billy Joel's scenes from an Italian restaurant is 37 seconds longer than that. Bottle of red. That attorney. That attorney. That attorney may be exhausted, unable to think straight. That attorney is likely to be grossly underpaid. Or working in an office crawling with cockroaches. You know what really blows? That attorney may pressure you to take a guilty plea. Statistically. Statistically. Statistically, there's a 90 plus percent chance that you will take that guilty plea. That attorney may get challenged to a fight in the hallway by a judge. That happened. Guess where? I don't know. Guess! Come on, guess. Florida? Of course it was Florida. How could it not be Florida? <laughs> One more thing, that attorney that was provided for you may not be free. If you lose, you may have to pay him. You might even have to pay the prosecutor. Is that constitutional? It's constitutional as f <laughs> You piece of shit! And all this assumes that we can even pay for that lawyer. How's the uh, Kickstarter campaign doing? Ah, uh, uh, no. Not even close. Not good. Not good at all. Now, do you understand your rights as I have explained them to you? No. What? No. Basically, you're f